Hey, this is Nim. If you've been raiding in 14 or consuming content about it, chances are you know, at least on some level, something about FF logs. You've heard it breaks the terms of service. You've heard it's for parsing. You might be familiar with someone saying, I'm the rank one black mage or some other thing. You might also be apprehensive about using it or want to know more. That's what we're going to cover today. This is everything you need to know about FF logs. So a quick rundown. FF Logs takes aggregated log data from Final Fantasy XIV combat logs, which are built into the game. The combat logs are files on your computer that the game uses to store combat data. You can read these logs in real time using your combat tab under your chat window. And FF Logs is more or less a third party program that you can install their uploader on your computer and it takes those logs and uploads them to their third party website, fflogs.com. Now, it's not exactly as easy as that. You also need another third-party program to track those logs in real time and save them in a format the website can understand. It, it basically breaks down all the information. And this is what ACT is used for, which is Advanced Combat Tracker. ACT has been around for many years prior to 14. It was used in other games, such as EverQuest 2, for the exact same purpose. So the terms of service breaking activity that most raiders partake in within the 14 community is to install ACT and configure it to track combat logs. The actual uploading of those logs separately to the website doesn't actually break TOS. It's, it's basically taking just a file and uploading it to a website that contains data about combat that took place. It's not actually an add-on you're using to manipulate or adjust game data. So a sizable but smaller portion of those players that install ACT to track DPS are actually uploading those logs to the website. It's not every player. Like many players install ACT just to look at the numbers in real time. They don't actually use it to upload logs, but many still do. So the reason for this is that they want to compare their performance to other players. That's the purpose of ACT. So what is actually breaking the rules here? Well, the long and short of it is that it's not actually against TOS to view and use the FF Logs website. You can go to the website and look at the data. You can use it to learn and there are no consequences. What is of consequence is installing third-party plugins like ACT and uploading that data to the website. But after that, I mean, you can just go on there and look at the logs. There's nothing wrong with that. Additionally, if you take information from third-party websites like FF Logs and use it to harass someone, then yeah, you're going to get in trouble. That trouble, though, won't fall under using third-party tools. It's going to fall under harassment. Unless, of course, your harassment investigation unveils that you also use third-party tools. You know, then in that case, yeah, you can get in trouble. And it's a gray area, right? So I might say it this way now, and it might change later. But this is just going off of how we typically see punishments go out around ACT. Uh, they could decide one day that they're going to start you know, laying band hammers to anyone who says they've even looked at ACT, but right now that's just not the case in practice. So what's the deal with all this? What's the purpose? What's the value? It's story time. I was leading a static through T, which is the epic of Alexander Ultimate in February of last year, roughly one year ago from now, and it was uh, the Shadowbringers Ultimate raid that came out. My team had reached the final phase of the fight, but we kept dying to enrage over and over. We just didn't have the damage going out. So what was going wrong? Where did we go wrong? Why was our damage not meeting the check? Even on pulls where we had low or no deaths, we still weren't meeting the check. Well, we had some investigation to do. In order to figure out this problem, we took logs from our T-Static and compared them to logs of another successful group on that fight with the same job composition, or at least mostly the same, and you see, FF Logs has a timeline of casts or fight you can use to say, well, this Black Mage casts like this and gets a lot more damage. Maybe that's why I'm doing less damage. 
We had to ask a few players to improve the rotations by examining successful ones. We had to move potion windows to better align with two minute cooldowns. And we actually had to change where we were using our two minute cooldowns in order to meet that DPS check. We accomplished this simply by taking a successful group log and saying, oh, they do it this way, it works for them, let's emulate that. And then we cleared the fight with the increased damage we got out of those changes. This is the ultimate purpose and value of FF logs. But a more common use case is for EP and ego, flexing. Let's take a look here. So here's the FF logs portal. I'll search for my character and boom, pulls up the latest savage parses right away. You see, here are the pretty colors. Most players use these colors as a way to prove how good they are at the game. They love to flex it, feel good about it. When a log is uploaded of your performance, it goes here and compares how you add up to all the other players playing your job on that fight. Sounds intense, right? Well, it's not really black and white. You see, most of the player base doesn't really understand what is and is not valuable on FF logs for data. This is a great tool, but it is very commonly misused or misunderstood. So before you go aiming for that pink parse 99th percentile god run, let's consider what parsing really comes down to. When it comes to a savage parse, let's say there's a lot of factors to consider on figuring out if a player is competent or not. Firstly, can they perform mechanics and do their rotation? I'll tell you right now, for clearing content, you could have pretty much everyone grave parsing a fight and still kill the boss. It's not so much about total damage uh, over the course of the fight, usually as much as it is total damage during your two minute windows. The exponential growth of damage during the two minute windows makes up for most rotational issues you have along the way. What really kills damage is is debuffs, you know, aka deaths or damage downs. Damage downs for two minutes or being dead and getting the weakness debuff will destroy your group's overall output during those burst windows. This will cause you to miss enrage checks. The harder the content though, the more tight these checks will become. So as you can expect, early savage fights are pretty lenient on rotation group wide, whereas late savage fights or ultimates can require high damage from everyone in the raid, including tanks and healers. So let's say you get a player who's good at the fight. They can do mechanics and their rotation and they're parsing maybe blue or maybe purple. Is blue really middle of the road? Is purple bad? Well, a blue parse is somewhere in the 50 to 70, 70th percentile range and purple's in the 70th to I think like 90 or 95 range. That seems pretty good, right? You're in the minority for, for performing well. It's actually a lot better than you might think, to be honest. You see, in 14, the difference between these high-end parses, when you start getting into that pink parse, that gold parse, that high, high purple parse, there's generally a few factors that stop those purples from being pinks, you know? And the first factor is gonna be rotational excellence. In 14, we all are slaves to the GCD with the double OGCD weave in between. So you cast a fire four and then you hit like, you know, sharp cast and swift cast while fire four is still on cooldown, right? That's the double weave. But did you know most players cannot properly double weave two OGCDs without clipping their GCD? It's true. The majority of players cannot do it. Not, not because, not because that they just need to get better at it, but quite literally the Techno the technology in front of them prevents them from accomplishing that goal. Usually it's going to be due to ping or latency to the server. If you ever spammed a skill and realized it wasn't very responsive to go off, it just kind of chugs and when it finally does go off, it almost locks you into the animation, preventing the next spell you're trying to cast from going off as well. That's what you call latency-based clipping. With latency-based clipping, completing an optimal rotation is very difficult. Some players can only single weave an OGCD because of this, and in some cases they can't weave at all. It gets weirder when you think about jobs who can use spell speed to speed up their GCD, like Black Mage or Gunbreaker. And because of this, most players won't typically see above blue or purple with standard play. And that's honestly okay. You're already excelling at what you do if you can hit those benchmarks. But there are some secrets other players aren't telling you about that propel them to these higher parses. Firstly, clipping. Most high-end parsers install an add-on to help with clipping and it's called 
clippy. The layman's terms for it, though it is more complex than this in practice, is that it convinces the server that you're closer to it, and in so doing allows it to register inputs from you sooner on your abilities than would normally be possible. This adds or this add-on emulates the feeling of having lower ping with without actually reducing your ping so that you can get more total casts out and thus parse higher. The second thing is kill times. Many jobs parse differently based on what phase they are in when a boss dies. So for example, Black Mage typically parses higher if the boss dies during its burst window. Most jobs benefit from kill times, but some jobs or some jobs on certain bosses do not. Black Mage has some great examples of having a preferred two minute window separate from the standard two minute window that Party Finder might use, or instances where a boss staying alive longer would increase the Black Mage's parse. And this has led to the culture of sandbagging, where one player sacrifices their own parse by doing lower damage intentionally so that another player can have a better parse basically manipulating the way FF logs works for them to look better. And then finally, crit RNG. Almost every job in the game is subject to the concept of crit variance. Sometimes you crit a lot, sometimes you crit less, and the best in slot for almost every job typically comes down to build more crit once you get your full gear set. The composition of your party, aligning two minute windows, and then blasting some sick crits will skyrocket your parse. But some jobs don't use crit and thus rely more on rotational excellence, such as spell speed black mage. However, even spell speed black mage relies on direct hit, which is still RNG. In any case, this crit direct hit variance leads to the culture of optimizing comp compositions and then farming content for high parses. You might see bars parties in Party Finder because they are farming the fight over and over and over until they have that alignment of rotational excellence, high crit direct hit ratio on that particular pull, and optimal kill time in order to look best on FF logs. For most high-end statics, you'll actually naturally try to accomplish this when learning the fight, but for the majority of the player base, it's just not feasible in Party Finder until you have 20 to 60 kills on certain content. So parsing on a high-end is generally something people do when they're bored, they have nothing else to do, or they just want to look better in front of others. That competitive side, right? And none of that has anything to do with how good of a player you are dealing with. Some jobs like Paladin are so incredibly easy to play because of how they're designed when compared to other jobs that high parsing on it doesn't take much work but if you take a gun breaker for example it's suddenly a whole different story understanding that parse numbers are also greatly influenced by the community how many players have cleared on your particular job on your particular fight will influence how difficult or easy it is to get a high or low number Remember, the more people who have cleared, the easier it is to rise towards the top. If there's like 50 gray parses, it shouldn't be too hard for you to come out on top. But if there's only like three gray parses, I'm like, well, it, it, it's more likely that you're not going to get that higher end parse because there's a smaller sampling pool, right? And the thing that FF Logs doesn't track is player consistency. Now, if you've listened to any of my other videos, you'll know that the number one trait in a good raider is consistency. Remember, we don't want you to practice mechanics until you get it right. We want you to practice mechanics until you don't get it wrong, right? Well, FF Logs is infamous for recruiting these players with high parses who, in a controlled and manipulated environment with working add-ons, they can perform well. But in an environment on patch day or with longer raid hours, they just can't keep up. Add into the mix that many high parsers are dependent upon strategies and tips from other players in their job, and you realize that a parse doesn't tell you how much about uh, how a raider will do with new content. It doesn't tell the full story. Not to mention that the second most important thing about raiding with someone is how they mesh with the team. There will never be a replacement for making sure that you get along with and work well with the people you're raiding with. You're a team after all, and raiding with someone who constantly is trying to fight or yell or scream or have it their own way, it just doesn't work. It's a teamwork dynamic. So with all of that in mind, I think we can understand FF Logs a bit better now.
We should also try to understand how parses work when comparing jobs against each other, but this is more of an in-depth discussion than is necessary for this video. So suffice it to say that there are different types of tracked DPS. You have RDPS, ADPS, and uh, there's a third one that I'm honestly a little less familiar with at the moment as it's fairly new. This Reddit post by Blutiful in 2022 really sums it up nicely, so check that out. But more or less, not all DPS is equal, not all jobs are tracked by the same metric, and so to add to the complexity, you have these, you know, different fields. Something to take away from this is that your total DPS is team dependent. Many jobs like Samurai or Black Mage who do not provide self buffs excel to the moon when provided with those buffs from other jobs. This explains the meta back in Shadowbringers that started, where Samurai paired with a dancer using dance partner on them became the staple for big old deeps for quite a time. So you should use a DPS for tanks, White Mage, Sage, Samurai, Black Mage, Machinist, and RDPS for pretty much all other jobs, typically. If you're comparing healers, you want to do it by combined healer damage, since healer DPS is dependent on healer comps. Are you still with me? Great. So how do I use this stupid website? So first you're going to find your character and open a log. Let's take my P12S phase 2 clear. Now I'll be honest with you, I've never been a parser, I don't try to parse, it's not something I'm interested in, so my parses are less than exceptional. I also don't use add-ons except occasionally I might throw up act to solve a problem, don't tell you OCP, but here's my purple parse, right? We can open it up and we see a bunch of numbers under damage done. I can filter this by casts and then add a timeline, now you can see exactly how I played this fight out. Without knowledge of boss mechanics, it can be a little tough to understand what was going on in the fight at that time, but I think you can add those in too, I'm just not fully sure how. I'm, there's probably another video out there that can teach FF logs better than I can. But for now, you can see where each cast was done to get that parse. It won't tell you what gear I had on, so am I crit black mage, am I spell speed black mage, you simply don't know. But for most jobs, it's a simple task of using the one bis that they have and doing the rotation. For low movement jobs like casters, or jobs that rely on teleports or weird positions to have high uptime, you can also see um, where everyone was standing with like a, a heat map feature on the website, but <laughs> I also don't know where that is. Uh, so for now we won't worry about it, we'll stick to the basics, but just know that that's out here somewhere. Uh, so if I wanted to compare this to another log, we can go here. We can go to Anabaseos, P12S, Phase 2 Rankings, and look at that, Rank 2 team has a Black Mage that we can compare to, and they parsed higher than me with a 90. And now we can see what they did differently. And if I can replicate what they're doing here, then I should parse higher. And since ADPS logs try to not account for buffs, you should be able to parse higher on Black Mage, regardless of the damage increase from buffs. And it will be more about ending the fight during your burst window with great rotation or rotational excellence. And then of course, using Clippy to avoid your GCD clipping during double weep OGCDs. All of this information that I'm telling you today should be available to you on the Balance Discord, except maybe some of the add-on stuff. It just takes a lot of reading. And remember, for healing logs and mitigation, as that is probably going to be the most common use case in figuring out the most common problem, well, why did we die? You can just click the healing tab, which also gets a parse number. Uh, this particular black mage parsed a 45 for healing on how well they used Adelin Man Ward. <laughs> Healing parses are a little uh, not as important, really, the, the numbers and what matters. It's more about making sure you had the right casts at the right time, because honestly, healers are trying to minimize how much healing they're doing, not maximize it. They're trying to get away with as little as possible so that they can put those numbers into damage instead. FF Logs goes a bit deeper in allowing you to make statistics or, or statics and upload to your your static group so you can better track attendance and performance and things like that. You can add your character in and claim it from the Final Fantasy XIV lodestone by going through a process here on the import page. But that's pretty much it for the basics. I hope this helped you understand what parsing is all about. The summary really is, is that they use add-ons to track the battle performance in a fight and then they upload it to a website so that everyone can kind of go in and look at what spells you cast and you can 
better improve your gameplay by seeing what other people are doing. Because you don't always have a more senior black mage to teach you how to play black mage well. And it really helps to just watch what they do and emulate it, just like you would in the real world. I hope that helps, and uh, until next time, this is Nem.